Hi, this is Alan Annan uh, with a few comments about the upcoming Singapore summit featuring uh, the United States and North Korea. So, um, you know, basic Mohorta says that you get the day right and uh, the rest could fall into place. However, June 12th uh, is a Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is a day for starting war, not for ending one. So there's a, a primary concern right there in that, you know, the parties might enter into this with a kind of uh, attitude of um, <clears throat> belligerence, uh, contentiousness, uh, fighting, rather than uh, making peace. So that's one concern. The other factor is that you know, in negotiations, we like to see the moon uh, with a certain degree of strength um, so that you can develop rapport and come to some common agreements. So in this chart, you know, some mixed reviews regarding the moon. So the moon is in Taurus, and that's great because that's an exalted position for the moon. Um, albeit a fixed sign, sun and moon are both in fixed signs, so you know you want a certain degree of flexibility in negotiations, so you might not get that. More worrisome, however, is the fact that the moon is in the last days of its uh, cycle, so <clears throat> a waning and dark moon, just two days before the new moon. So that's not a great thing either. Um, and of course, you know, for the time that's been set for the uh, this summit, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning on June 12th, um, this will give Gemini rising, and it'll place both that sun and moon in the 12th house. Uh, and again, not the best position for uh, these two luminaries. However, there are some good things about this chart. Gemini rising, uh, Mercury is in the first house. So that gives, um, <clears throat> let, let's call um, the United States the uh, initiators or instigators of this in the lead position, let's say, and assume that that's um, representative of them. So um, Mercury in the first house, um, that's Bhadra Yoga. Mercury uh, is a, a Swarashi in its own sign. Mercury also has Digbala in the first house. So that's all good. It may reflect well upon the capacity of negotiators to you know, bring their case to the table. However, there's some mixed reviews here. We have um, definitely a Papa Kartari Yoga going on here, where um, Mercury and the Ascendant are flanked by the Sun on one side, Rahu on the other side. Okay, two malefics, uh, and that's going to, you know, place some constraints upon them, and you know, perhaps disadvantage them in some regard. Some might argue that we've also got Shuba Kartari going on here as well, where uh, Mercury and uh, the Ascendant are flanked by benefics. Venus, yes. Moon, well, yeah, technically a benefic, but when it's this dark, um, it's not a benefic anymore. It actually can function as a malefic. So I kind of discard that notion and say, if you want to call this a Shubha Kartri Yoga, it's a very weak one, or it's a deficient one, or an impaired one, and we, we can't really see the benefits from that. However, note that Venus and Moon are in um, Parivartna Yoga. Moon's in the sign of Venus, Venus is in the sign of Moon. Um, is that a good thing? Well, given that these are the lords of the second and the twelfth house, respectively, uh, I have some doubts about the, the goodness of this. Um, and the second house are, are, is indicative of the words that are spoken, the things that are said. So <clears throat> it's a measure of truth, for instance, uh, in, in an individual's chart. And you know, in this negotiation, I would be concerned that false promises would be made, or you know, falsehoods would be presented, or you know, something about this is not entirely above board or as clear and distinct as it ought to be. Um, okay, so. And, you know, that was quickly on, on the side of, uh, let's say, the, uh, the United States. Uh, facing <laughs> Donald Trump is Kim Jong-un in North Korea. Uh, what's going on there in the seventh house? Well, we have Saturn. Saturn's retrograde. That's one source of strength. But this makes Saturn stronger, of course. Um, Saturn also has Digbala in the seventh house, which gives it an additional strength. And Saturn is, you know stubborn and recalcitrant and intransigent and unlikely to you know 
change easily. Mind you, these are dual signs, and there is the, the potential for some degree of rapport between Mercury and Saturn because <clears throat> they do um, uh, mutually aspect each other. Um, if you look at this from the point of view of Tajika um, uh, Jyotish and say, is there a valid aspect between those two? Well, um, <clears throat> Mercury has a sort of a scope of uh, seven degrees on, on either side of exactitude, while Saturn has nine. Take the average of those two, seven plus nine, 16 divided by two is eight. You've, these two are just over eight degrees, so it's really tight, but you know, probably we will call that uh, a valid uh, mutual uh, Tajika aspect, an applying aspect, because Mercury is moving towards Saturn. Saturn actually is even retrograde and therefore moving back towards the degree of Mercury. So let's assume that that is, uh, you know, promising, although huh, don't expect anything to happen quickly. This may move very slowly. Uh, the Lord of the seventh house is Jupiter. Here's Jupiter, also strong by virtue of its retrogression, well placed in the fifth house. So that's a positive, uh, you know, that's a strength uh, on the side of North Korea. Jupiter happens to be uh, Swa Nakshatra as well too. So that gives it another source of strength. So there's several strengths here on the side of North Korea. And we might see from their point of view um, <clears throat> that they have um, strength, um, you know, in their current status, uh, have brought the United States to the negotiating table. Um, promises may be made, but this will be very, very slow going. Let's go back to the moon. Uh, the moon is in Kritika. You know, Kritika is a nakshatra that's associated with heat, a high degree of energy. It, it, it can bring to the table very complex subjective emotions. There can quickly erupt some sort of animosity, um, outbreaks of uh, attitude and temper tantrums, and not literally explosions, but uh, you know, um, explosive personalities. The potential is there for that. Again, this is a reason why I don't like um, this particular moon position, which doesn't bode well for the ability to get anything signed. Like for instance, uh, the second house is indicative of what is said, and the third house indicative of what might get signed in this. Both of those luminaries governing the second and the third house are in the twelfth. Uh, that's not a particularly good prognosis for coming away from this uh, with anything other than a notion of, okay, well, that was a kind of a get acquainted talk. It may have been difficult, uh, but we may not have anything to show for it yet. So as Trump is fond of saying, we'll see what happens.